consider the pictures on the screen. Over here you will find that a person is opening a tap, driving a car and opening a jam can. Now let us say that these activities are being performed by you. So let's say you are opening a tap or let's say your father is driving a car or an even more general case of you opening a jam can. Now these are regular activities that happens in everyday life. Now obviously to do each of these activities you have to apply a certain amount of force. Now in order to open a tap or to drive a car or to open a jam can, how many forces do you think you apply? Do you apply only one force or are there more than one force at play? Let us find out. Firstly, I want you to consider this animation. In this animation, P is denoting the center of the wooden table. And as we can see, two boys are trying to push the table from both ends. Now, if you notice closely, you will find that these boys are standing exactly opposite to one another and they are applying a force. The force being applied is the same by both the boys. So since these forces are in the opposite direction, they cancel and evidently the table does not move. Now let us perform the same thing but with in a slightly different manner. So over here the two boys are applying the same force again from opposite ends of the table but as you can see they are not directly opposite to one another anymore. They have moved to either end of the table on their respective sides. And in this case, you find that the table starts rotating. So even though both the forces are same in magnitude and both the forces are opposite in direction to one another, the table has a movement. Or in other words, the table starts to rotate. So what exactly is happening over here? Let us analyze it in greater detail. Now consider these two people applying a force on the table. Let's say this person is person A and this person is person B. Now the line along which person A is applying the force is this line. And the line along which person B is applying the force is this line. So as you can see these lines are not the same. So we can say that these two lines are parallel but the force is being applied in the opposite direction that is this person is applying a force in this direction whereas this person person B is applying a force in the downward direction. So despite the fact that the lines are parallel the forces are opposite in direction. So we can also say that these forces are anti-parallel. These forces although they have the same line of action and are parallel are in the opposite direction. So these forces are anti-parallel. Now consider the other characteristics. These forces have the same magnitude. As you can see they are of an equal magnitude and they are not along the same line of action. Or in other words if you consider just person A you will find that he has a constant line of action. If you consider just person B, even he has a constant line of action. But these lines of action are not the same for both of them. Thus, this line of action and this line of action are not the same. So we can say that they are not acting along the same line of action. When these two forces satisfy these criteria, we call them a couple. So we can say that it was a couple that was rotating the table about point P. So how can we define a couple? We define a couple as a pair of equal and opposite forces not acting along the same line is defined as the couple acting on the object. Now again in this definition there are three things to remember. Firstly, the forces should be equal in magnitude. Secondly, the forces should be opposite forces and thirdly they should not be acting along the same line of action.
they should not be acting along the same line of action. So these are the three conditions that must be fulfilled by two forces in order to be classified as a couple. Now consider this animation. Over here you will find that a boy is trying very hard to push a table but he is unable to do so. Why? Because the force that he is applying on the table is insufficient to cause any motion in the table. Notice what happens when he is joined by another boy. Both of them apply a force on the table. So let's say the force being applied by boy A is FA and by boy B is FB. Now as you can see both A and B are applying the force in the same direction. We can say the direction of FA is parallel to the direction of FB and as you can see the forces get added up. So just like forces get added up in the case of linear motion, even torques get added up in the case of circular motion. Now before we talk about torques adding up, it is important to remember that couple produces only rotation. You will never have a couple that produces linear acceleration or linear motion. So a couple produces only rotation. Now consider a schematic of the previous animation that I showed you. That is two persons pushing the table from either end on opposite sides. So let's say this person is applying a force F and this person is also applying a force F. Now the center of this table is denoted as P. This is the center of the table and the length of the entire table is D. So what can I say? I can say that the length of each of these forces from P is equal to D by 2. Because as I mentioned to you, P is the center of the table. So the two forces that are acting are forming a couple and the table starts rotating about point P. Now P is the axis of rotation where the axis of rotation is considered as my pen is facing that is into the plane of the board. So now consider the torque that force A is producing. Force A has a magnitude of F and it is acting at a distance of D by 2 from the axis of rotation. Thus torque at A would be equal to force at A multiplied by perpendicular distance from P. That is nothing but F into D by 2. This torque is responsible for producing an anti-clockwise rotation as you can clearly see. So this torque F into D by 2 produces anti-clockwise rotation. Similarly, we can find out torque for force at B. Again, in this case, force at B acts at a distance of D by 2 from P. So, the torque at B will also be equal to F into D by 2. And if you observe closely, even in this case, the torque is in the anticlockwise direction. So it produces anticlockwise rotation. So both these forces are producing a torque that causes the body to rotate in the anticlockwise direction or in the same direction. So when a linear force is applied, those two forces, that is two parallel forces, got added up. Even in this case, two forces acting in this manner produce a torque which gets added up. So thus we can say that net torque on the system would be an addition of torque at A and torque at B which is nothing but Fd by 2 plus Fd by 2 which gives me F into D. So F into D is the net torque on the system. And I can also say that the net torque on the system due to the couple F and F is equal to F into D. Thus, this T is defined as force into perpendicular distance in between the two forces. So if I have been given two forces, instead of finding out each torque individually and then calculating the net torque, I can easily consider any one of the forces because they are equal in magnitude and the perpendicular distance in between the two forces. And that would give me the net torque on the system due to 
the couple so the si unit of moment of couple is newton meter because it has the same formula as that of torque and similarly the cgs unit of moment of couple is 9 cm so force into distance if considered in the si units it is newton meter if considered in cgs units it is 9 cm so now consider the images that i showed you absolutely at the beginning i asked you how many forces do you think are acting on each of these objects so when you are opening a tap you will find that you are applying a force both with your index finger as well as with your thumb when your dad is driving a car and let's say he is taking a right turn you will find him applying a force both with his right hand as well as with his left hand in order to turn the steering wheel likewise while you are opening the can of jam while opening the cap again you are applying two forces so in all these cases we have couples acting on the respective objects now can you imagine how hard it would be if it was not for couples try it out try to open a tap with just one finger you will find that it is pretty difficult in a similar manner ask your dad on a not so busy street to drive with one hand and take a turn using just one hand you will learn from your dad that even that is pretty difficult and lastly if you try to open the can of a jam with one finger you will find that it is nearly impossible to do so so best of luck trying to do that so now we see that couples are very important and they assist us in day to day life as you can see we might not always observe it but mathematically i have shown you how it is true